What's up everybody? So it looks like OnePlus has finally started to roll out Android 12 update, that too in the stable version, just after one beta update, which is weird, but it is now there for the OnePlus 8T, 8 series and the OnePlus 9R. And almost everyone was waiting for this day, because this is still unified OS and not exactly the Oxygen OS that we used to love. So in this video, we'll go through every little detail that you need to know about it. Also before we start, make sure to tap on that subscribe button and press that bell icon if you haven't already. It will keep you up to date with all the latest videos. And in case you wish to watch this video in Hindi language, here is a card to the BitTech Hindi channel as well. So first up, you should not hurry up and install this update because it is the first stable version and it is bound to have some bugs and small issues. Secondly, if you are on the open beta version, you will get an OTA for this one directly. You will not end up losing your data, which is a good news. And if you are on the stable version, you will get it of course. Rest, your data will stay as is, but do take a backup just to be safe. And you can install this update manually on your device as well. Now let's move on to the process on how you can install this one on your device. Well, the process is really simple and you're already used to it. So basically, like you install every update, just download the zip file from the link in description area. And when you will download it, it will be in the downloads folder, of course. After that, you will have to cut it out from the download folder and paste it outside, not into any folder as such. Just make sure to do this step properly, else the system will not be able to detect that zip file. Okay, so after keeping it in the internal storage, now go to settings. Here go to system, choose system updates from the list and click on this gear icon on the top right corner. Now choose local upgrade option from the list and choose the zip file we just downloaded and click on this OK button. And you can even see it on the pop-up that it will not format your data. So read this pop-up every time you install an update. Also, if you are on the open beta version, you will not be able to see this option directly. For this, you need to download the system update application that I've provided in the description area. So download it, install the APK and just tap on this gear icon on the top right corner. Now choose the zip file we just downloaded. And this will start installing OxygenOS 12 on your OnePlus device. And this will take some time to install. So leave your device as is for some time. And I'm fast forwarding the process just to save some of your time. And this will start installing this OxygenOS 12 on your OnePlus device. And I'll also post a full review after using it extensively. So stay tuned for that as well. And this will take some time to install. So leave your device as is for now. And I'm fast forwarding the process just to save some of your time. And there you go. You finally have the Oxygenos 12 stable update on your OnePlus device. And it does feel same yet different. Now let's have a look at the benchmark scores after this update. And let's see if there is any improvement in the scores on paper. So I did test this Oxygenos 12 with Geekbench as well as Android 2. On Geekbench, the device scored a bit better than before like around 911 in single core and 3157 in the multi core score. On the other hand on Android 2, the device scores around 680,000 points which is quite good as well. Coming to the camera application now and after this update, the version of camera application has been bumped up from 5.8.120 to 5.9.54 but it is still the OnePlus camera application and not the Oppo camera. So the UI is similar and all the modes and issues are similar as well. Now here are some random camera samples that I took just to give you guys an idea about the image quality. And I'll test it out even more and will post an in-depth review really soon. But for now, here is what they look like. So as you can see, well nothing much has changed here and the images do look similar mostly. And I see some a bit more grain in the front facing camera samples. And there are no new features that are introduced with this Oxygenos 12. Similar is the case for videos and let's see how well it does in various scenarios. Speaking about the gaming mode, well that is also from OxygenOS only, but it does have some new features like that voice changer and you can add shortcuts to open any application which is helpful. Other than that, you have this game focus mode which will block almost everything like call notifications and whatnot. You also get this new performance setting option where you can decide your priority and choose the kind of performance you want while gaming. Also I did play BGMI for a short time here. And yes, there is 90 FPS mode support, which sadly doesn't work even after forcing 120Hz. And as per the FPS counter at least, yep, it doesn't work. 
Overall, the game will work fine on smooth and extreme settings. Though I found the gaming experience to be a bit better on Oxenos 11. And as of now, you cannot force 120Hz mode like before. But I did find a solution and here is a video on how you can do that. First up, right from the lock screen itself, the fingerprint scanner animation has changed now. And well, you know where it is from. But for what it's worth, it works really fine as it should. And similarly in the launcher, the icon pack from OxyOS is gone now, which is something I definitely loved and will miss it. As this phone icon looks kinda cheap, or is it just me? Let me know in the comment section down below. The launcher also looks a bit different now, love it or hate it, and this is what it is now. Of course it is not the OnePlus launcher as you must have guessed it by now. By default we get some of the applications and thank god and OnePlus for almost no bloatware, except that Facebook Messenger. Well, we can easily uninstall that, no worries. And apart from that, the theme store is there, which I'll get to in a second. So more or less, the system is still clean. Also, the hidden space has now been moved from the usual left hand side in the launcher, which was very convenient. So it has now been moved under privacy settings. And there you can set up a different or same pin, and you can hide any app or use the app locker. And there is also a private space to hide your private stuff like the images, audio and all other files, which is handy for some. So all the features are present here. There is also this app cloner that works in the same way as it did on OxyOS 11 and you cannot use it on all applications, just the one supported, which isn't that handy definitely. And before I forget, the DRM level is Wideband L1, so Netflix and other applications will work in full HD on this one. And all other payment apps will work as well as it passes the safety net. Also there are some widgets from Android 12 which weirdly can be added once you long press on the home screen and tap on this plus button on the top left corner. And also there is no material you theming or any sort of custom theming engine which might come later as Google said the same. So for now it is not there but the haptics do feel better and a bit more refined here. The app closing animation and everything feels fluid for now and I don't see any issues here. Though you might get annoyed to see the shelf every time you swipe down from the top right corner, but you can turn it off easily. So on the shelf screen, click on this gear icon on the top right corner and turn off the shelf from top right corner option. Also yes, the shelf is kinda new now and it looks like this with its new UI and it has some refinements here and there. Also the applications like OnePlus Dialer and Messages from Oxenos 11 will just not work on this one. So don't even try. And yes, you still have the Google dialer only, so if call recording is your priority, stick to Oxygen OS 11 until I can find a solution to this one. Lastly in the launcher, the wallpaper picker has also been changed now and it looks something like this. It also brings some new animations which you can try as well. Overall it feels smooth just like Oxygen OS, but it doesn't carry that same feel. One irritating thing that I saw here was the privacy request pop-up that is there in almost every single place. And they are basically asking to collect more data now as well as the permission that the app needs. So it just doesn't look nice and it is necessary to agree to it, which is very wrong in my honest opinion. Now going into the settings and here the UI has changed as well, which is fine and it looks good enough I would say. One more thing that got changed here is the customization tab and that is now called personalizations. And here we have a bunch of options like before. So you do get the always on display with all the older themes that were there, including the Insight AOD, Bitmoji and the Canvas AOD. And it's good to see all of them present. The Canvas AOD has also been upgraded now and it even has more options to choose from. In the icons tab, you can tweak some icons and shapes and you can even apply custom icon packs, yes. But you can still tweak the accent color, thankfully. And I love the fingerprint animations especially the fireworks one and some extra animations have also been added. Overall the fingerprint scanner is fast and responsive, so no issues there. Now about the theme store that has been added, well I really would not like to apply any theme just to make it look even more far from stock and it looks kinda funny to me sometimes. But some of you might like the theme store as it does have some free themes as well. And I do feel this was given just to earn more money by selling content like Xiaomi and other brands too. Next up we have this dark mode toggle which has finally brought the pitch black dark mode with it. And I'm quite happy about it of course. So thank you for that Oppo. Next we have this new oneplus gallery 
which is now called Photos. And this is also in tune with Oxygen OS 12. So it looks more or less kind of same. Now apart from all that, we have the 100 mode just like on the Pixel devices. And the other features like Scout, Quick Launch, Zen mode and Work Life Balance mode are also there as well. The screen recorder has also changed now and as expected, it looks the same like that on ColorOS. There is also an option to bring all the icons down while using the device with one hand. So I think that's nifty as well. About the overall performance, well the device does seem snappier as compared to OxygenOS but at the cost of some features, UI among other sacrifices. And I'll also test out the battery life after this update. And yes, the battery tab has also been changed now. Plus you have that high performance mode so the device won't stay in maximum performance like before. And you will have to turn on this mode to get the best results while gaming. Rest I'll test the performance even more, so stay tuned for the full review. Overall it does feel more refined than Oxygen OS 11, but the UI might not be that appealing to everyone now. Though I personally feel that it is not oriented to hardcore OnePlus fans who just love the original Oxygen OS and it does give some mixed vibes every time I use it. Other than that, there aren't any major issues and features like dynamic theming or material you are not there. So everything else is fine more or less as this is just color OS without some features. And it is what it is now. Love it or hate it. The Dolby Atmos is also a bit better looking now and similar to what we get with color OS 12. And in case you wish to watch that video, here is a card for all the features in color OS 12. So this was the Oxygen OS 12 stable version for the OnePlus 8 series and 9R. And if you do end up liking this video, make sure to tap on that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.